so I, uh, I'm starting to get a lot of questions, emails, and comments um, in regards to the Nielsen electric circuit stuff, and it feels a lot like I'm jumping all over the place, so um, since I'm getting more questions and emails than I can possibly respond to, I thought the better strategy was to actually go through methodically through the book, and um, instead of jumping around chapter 12, chapter 7, 6, I'm just going to focus on moving in a logical um, in a logical place, um, in a logical flow, in accordance with the textbook. So I'm not going to do chapter 1 or chapter 2 because it's um, too trivial for YouTube. You can read that and learn it yourself, but where it starts to get uh, fundamental is um, chapter 3. So I'm going to start with chapter 3 and assume that you know Kirchhoff's Laws. Uh, Kirchhoff's Law says current into a node must equal current out of a node. Um, uh, and I, I'm assuming that you know Ohm's Law, which says that voltage and current are linearly related, V is equal to IR. And um, power must balance, so um, power consumed, uh, absorbed must equal power abs uh, developed in a closed system. And um, what else am I, what other assumptions that, I, that I'm, uh, I'm also assuming that you know that current is assumed to be a positive charge, and therefore um, the passive sign convention goes along with that. So um, I'm assuming you know the passive sign convention. Uh, okay, so in chapter three, we start by understanding how, uh, how resistors are um, combined together to, uh, to make an equivalent resistance. Um, resistors that are in series are connected at one node pair. So if you have one resistor here, and it's connected just by one endpoint, this is a series connection. When they're connected by two node pairs, like here, and then like this, they are said to be connected in parallel. Resistors, now be really careful, sometimes a resistor in a schematic will look like this. That's still a parallel connection because they're connected at point A and then point B. So they're connected at two node pairs, it's a parallel connection, even though it doesn't look like one. But then also be careful when it does look like a parallel connection, it's really not. So this is geometrically, R1 and R2 are geometrically um, in parallel, but they're not a parallel connection because you have this resistor here breaking up the connection. So what it really is is that R1 is um, in parallel with R2, which is in series with R3. So resistances combined in series like this, if you have um, two resistors connected in, in series, the um, R2, um, the equivalent resistance of a series connection is just R1 plus R2, okay? And when you have something that is connected in parallel, R1, R2, the equivalent resistance, REQ, will be the sum of the reciprocals. So it's 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 and the reciprocal of that. And you do that for however many you have in, in, in parallel with each other. So thing, important concepts um, in regards to the voltages and current. Voltages in, um, voltages in resistors connected in parallel will be equal. So you have some resistor, R1, R2, if they are connected in parallel, they will have the same voltage drop. So V1 will equal V2, same voltage drop, but they can have differing currents. So, now the opposite is true, the inverse is true with um, the, connect, the series connection. So you have resistors connected like that, R1 and R2. The current through there, I1, must equal the current through here. So I1 must equal I2. That's proven in Nielsen text using KCL, uh, Kirchhoff's current law. So current in must equal current out, which makes sense because if you have, think about a river, 
Um, if a river has just one channel, it's got to be the whole volume that's flowing through there. So uh, it's, current, it's the same in, in, this, in this case, electrical current is the same. If there's only one way, one channel for it to go, then all of the current that's entering must also be exiting. Now, the different, now what, is, di what can differ and does differ is the voltage drop. So there's some voltage drop that happens when the current goes through there, and then there's some kind of voltage that's dissipated here. And if these are different, then they, these don't have to be, and, and oftentimes they will not be the same. So the voltage drop across R1 will not, for the most part, uh, be the same as the voltage drop across R2. So the, in, the exact inverse of um, the parallel connection is true. So now that you have all that information, we can solve these problems. So start farthest away from, the vol from your, your source. In this case, we have a voltage source. And here, we, if we start over here, we see that this is in series with something. Is it in series with this, the 40 ohm, or is it in series with the 10 ohm? Well, it's actually not in series with either one of them individually. It's in series with this unit here, which is in parallel with each other. And the way you write that is, you write that as 22 ohms is in series with 10 ohms, which is in parallel with 40 ohms. So we can simplify our circuit by doing that mathematics. And that is equal to 22 ohms plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 40. And we take the inverse of that. And when you do that, you get 1 divided by 10 plus 1 divided by 40, negative 1 plus 22. Okay, so 1 divided by 10 plus 1 divided by, divided by 40, so negative 1 plus 22, you should get 30. So we can redraw this entire branch, replace that entire branch with its equivalent resistance of 30. So what I have here then is what used to be here is the same thing as that. So now, what's left of the circuit is we have 18, right? It's in series with this whole thing, but this whole thing is all in parallel with each other. So the way we write that is the equivalent resistance of the entire system is going to be the 18 ohms, which is in series with the um, 100 ohms, which, and that is in parallel with the 25 ohms, and that is in parallel with the 30 ohms. And mathematically, that is equal to 18 plus 1 over 100 plus 1 over 25 plus 1 over 30, the inverse of that. And that gives you 1 divided by 100 plus 1 divided by 25 plus 1 divided by 30, inverse of that, plus 18 and you get 30 ohms. So your final circuit looks like this. Okay, all that is exactly the same thing as that. Okay, and that is the Answer for part A, part B. Okay, so for part B, we have this circuit, we have a current source, 5 milliamps. Note that the value of the current source, or whatever the source is, doesn't impact the equivalent resistance. The equivalent resistance is what it is, whether you have a current source or a voltage source or whatever. It doesn't matter. And we have that is in parallel with 10K, 5K, 2K, 9K, Okay, so to find the equivalent resistance of this system, 
as seen by the source, we'll start from the farthest point away from the source, which is here. If you look at this branch, it doesn't look like it's in parallel, but it really is, because this 6K is connected at one end here. This is just wire. This is a resistor. This is just a wire that's bent into the shape of a square connected to this end. So this is the same thing as something that's more obvious to see, which is this. It doesn't matter where we put the wire, right? So this is in parallel, but note that this is also in parallel with the 9K. So we have three resistors connected in parallel, and we can rewrite this by its equivalent resistance, and that REQ is going to be 9K is in parallel with 6K, which is an oops, it's not in parallel. Does it mathematically, it doesn't matter that I switched that, but still, it's really not in parallel with the 6K, it's in parallel with the 18K, which is in parallel with the 6K. And so, that's going to be 1 over 9K plus 1 over 18K plus 1 over 6K inverse. And that gives us... plus 1 divided by 6 makes that negative 1. That gives us 3K. And as a reality check, the equivalent resistance of parallel connected resistors must be smaller than the smallest resistance. So this is definitely the smallest, smaller than the smallest, which is the 6K. So this looks like a figure that we can believe. In an exam, if we got something like 13, and that's bigger than the smallest, then we recheck our math and see what's wrong. But being that it's 3K and it is smaller than the smallest of these three, we know that that's an answer that makes sense. So, therefore, we feel good about replacing all of that junk with this. The new equivalent, which is 3K. So, this is connected at one, one point. This is connected at one point with there. And that, that whole thing, all this junk, is connected in a node pair with a 10K. So, we can write that as a 10K is in parallel with the 5K, which is in series with the 2K, which is in series with the 3K. So we have 10K is in parallel with 5K, which is in series with 2K, which is in series with 3K. 5, 2, 7, 7, 3 is 10. So we have 10K is in series with 10K. They're the same, so the equivalent resistance is going to be one half of it. And that's going to be 5K. So your final system is going to look exactly like this. Okay. And that's the answer to part B. Okay. Part C. We have 600 ohms, 200 ohms, and they put the source in the middle this time. So then we want to know what the equivalent resistance is as seen from here, from the, the source. But the source is in the middle of all this junk. So we'll make a note of the fact that this current source has some voltage drop. Well, that voltage drop has got to be the same with this voltage drop, which has got to be the same with this voltage drop. And since they have the exact same voltage drop, I can swap them around. I can interchange the parallel connected one. So I am going to put the 200 ohm here, put the 600 here, and then put my current source here. That's perfectly fine. And that was 0.2 amps. So now I can uh, find out what is the resistance that is seen from this standpoint. Well, starting at the farthest point away, this 
is in series with each other, which is in parallel with that. That this is in parallel with this, which is in parallel with that. And so we can rewrite that as REQ is equal to 600 in parallel with 200 in parallel with 300. All of that is in series with 250 plus 150. Mathematically, that is equal to 1 over 600 plus 1 over 200 plus 1 over 300 inverse plus 250 and 150 is 400. That gives me 1 divided by 600 plus 1 divided by 200 plus 1 divided by 300 inverse plus 400. Six hundred, two hundred and three hundred, one hundred plus two fifty plus one fifty is four hundred. Oh, and this is actually really, really easy to make. I made a mistake here. This is in series, and of course, once you combine that in series, it's in parallel with all of that. My bad. So that's in parallel with the 400, because it's connected here and here. So then when you do that, parallel with the 400. So this gives me 1 over, so... Uh, 1 divided by 600 plus 1 divided by 200 plus 1 divided by 300. Enter raised to the negative 1. That gives me 100 in parallel with 400. That's going to be 1 over 100 plus 1 over 400. Inverse that. That gives me 1 divided by 100 plus 1 divided by 400. Inverse. And that gives me 80K. So, um, not 80K, but 80. So what that says is I can replace all this junk, all of that, and the exact same thing as all of that is the current source connected with an 80 ohm resistor. Okay, and that's it for this lesson. Thanks.